But yeah, that's mad. I just, I don't why. I, I can't work this way, but not the other way. I don't know. It's so frustrating. You know what, what you should have done? You should have, you should have toned all your followers to follow me and then they can watch it. Everyone can watch it and it gets well, me some followers. <laughs> no, what, what will happen is now because you're going live with me, everyone that follows Fight Connect TV, it'll I get you. come up on their profile as well. So they okay. will be able to so join. It's the same thing, but just I've started it instead of you. Yeah, exactly. The only yeah. thing is now when they put in a question, I can't see it. Really? So right. you, you, well, you, can, you can call out your own questions. It'll be a special episode because you're the last one, right? <laughs> oh, all right, Sam. But why do you have questions? Because I've turned comments off. Yeah, the comments are off, but you'll see there's a tiny little... Are you paying me now for this Instagram tutorial? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I'm going to have to, but it looks at it. <laughs> I'm sending you an invoice. There's a tiny, <laughs> there's a tiny little box. Right. And when someone puts a question in, like you'll see number one, two, three, and all the questions, the immense right. questions that they put in. So, yeah. won't we'll, we'll sort it. Won't we'll sort it. It I had to have a little spice in it, didn't it? If it's last episode, yeah, exactly. It's a little bit different. There we go. Well, tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow night is the last episode, but it's Dave oh, Allen, yeah. and he does every Again. Friday night, so they, oh, it's no, there's no he's surprise. Got a, Dave's got to do the last one, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it makes sense. He's after doing every Friday night since yeah, quarantine. Yeah. So, um, but how's things? How are you? Good, I'm good. Um, beautiful weather here in, in sunny Sheffield, so it's uh, yeah, it's been, been a good day. Um, I've, I've done I've done two two sessions today, so I'm uh, I'm I'm knackered, but I've, I've been looking forward to this all day. Thank thanks for having me on. It's brilliant what you've been doing, by the way. You know, it's been it's really giving people something to to watch and that you know and keep up to date with fires and that and what and, and what the what what they're doing. You know, day to day to day. So Thank long you done, much. long done, you. Thanks, I mean, to be honest, it's totally selfish. I just, I was so bored in quarantine. I was like, this is a good opportunity to just chat to loads of great people. So, <laughs> yeah, turning, turning negatives into positives. That's what yeah, you got to do. Exactly, so go. exactly. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's funny because, like, obviously, the first thing to go for me, like, what my, the whole idea if I connect to you is covering events, live events. So, yeah, that yeah. was obviously the first to go. And then I was like, you know, what do you do? Do you just sit back and not work? I mean, you have to just adapt to it. But they ended up being brilliant. They got such a good reception, yeah, you know. Yeah. And, like, I couldn't believe that, like, you know, like, all you guys are, like, you know, up there. Do you know what I mean? Like, champions at the top of your sport, you know. So I was, like, sending messages, like, little Instagram messages. Will you do an interview? Yeah, yeah. And every, nobody said no. Do you know what That's I mean? It. It was like, you know, why, yeah. why would you say no? You know, it's... Um... I mean, to go, I, I just I like I like speaking to people. You know, you seem yeah. seem like a, a nice lady, so why why not? I, I just I enjoy speaking to people anyway. So uh, if you can do that and and you know keep in touch with, with your followers and people that are supporting you, uh, yeah. why why not? Exactly, exactly. That's it. You know what I mean? And it's like the it, I think there's a lot of new UK viewers as well that have come on board because obviously I. I made an effort to like reach out to people that are not in Ireland because in Ireland it's small, but I've interviewed all the guys loads of times yeah, before yeah. and I will do in a, probably a couple yeah, of weeks yeah. again. Do you know what I, mean? I, so, I had a little look on, on YouTube earlier. I, I, you did a, a Conor McGregor one, didn't you? Yeah. That was a long time ago and I was just yeah. after starting. I was so nervous. Like I was right. sh shitting myself. You couldn't because tell me. Damn it, it was only a short one, didn't it? But no, you did well. We were good. Thanks, we were good. William. Yeah, he, there was actually, it was an MMA, it was on in the National Boxing Stadium in Dublin, but it was an MMA show. And yeah. one of his teammates was fighting on us. And he came in and like, we'd met each other before, but not really, just kind of like, oh, hello, being introduced. And I just, we just got total balls. I just went straight up to him. Yeah. I was like, Connor, yeah. please, we do an interview. And he That's was like, it. of course, yeah, yeah, no problem. But he went off and then I was like, bollocks, I'm not going to get him back. End of the night, he comes into the backstage area. Lydia, yes. yeah, I'll do an interview with you now. I couldn't believe it. And yeah. then it was the first interview that he'd done after his loss to Nate Diaz. So I, I didn't realise at the time that it was the first interview. And then when it went up, it went viral because it's the first time he spoke in his, yeah. after his yeah. first loss in the UFC, you know. so That's um, great. Do you know what, what I've realised is if you get an opportunity... Just get get on it and and do it right. Me me and me and Sam Sheedy right. We yeah. we went to I went out to Ukraine in January for sparring sparring with um the WBA champion uh, Artem Delakian and Lomachenko were there. So 
the one morning, me, me and Sam's walking in canteen, um, and I'd, I'd already spoke to Artem about it. I, you know, I asked him, is, is Loma here? He said, yeah. When when we see him, I'll I'll, uh, I'll in, in, introduce you. You know, so so he walks in and he's he's sat with his dad and his team in back at canteen. So we get up, you know, say hello, like best day of my life. Both of you were brilliant. That night uh, after sparring, it was dark. We, we were coming out of, out of gym, uh, and we just turned corner and I, I went looking. And Sam Sam said, "Look," and it was it was Yusik and Loma because they're, they're like best mates, aren't they? And it was dark, and I was like, "That's not them." And he was like, "I swear to God, that that is that is Yusik and Loma." And we were like, we were probably I'd say about twenty yards, about thirty yards behind them, something like that. And and I said, and so I, I would just, I was going to shout, "You sick!" and just run <laughs> over and have a photo on that. And I didn't. I said, I, I, it, like, by, by the time I realised it with them, it, it were a bit too late. And I and I thought, oh, we'll, we'll see him. We'll see him tomorrow. They'll be a long time. You know, we saw Loma this morning. We never saw him again. So I was oh. absolutely uh, uh, sick. Uh, so if you get an opportunity, capitalise. That's yes. the way. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> To oh shit! Well, I always think that, like you know, in those circumstances, you'll get your opportunities again, and it'll be a better opportunity. You know, Absolutely. it'll be something where he'll be like, he'll know who you are, or he'll approach well, you or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. That's what I always look at stuff for that. It's and, like that. I shook, I shook Lomachenko's hand. I was like, hey, I'm, I'm Tommy, and he was like, hello, I'm, I'm Vasily. I was like, I know who you are, mate. You don't have to tell me who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I love that though. That's what you want to hear. You want to hear like a, a bit of humility, don't you? That like you know, they're yeah. not like oh, kiss the know. ring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, you were scheduled to fight in March, weren't you? Yeah, twenty seventh for March. Yeah, uh, was I'll it an IB IBO title that was for IBO flyweight title? Yeah, against uh, Maximino Flores from Mexico. Uh, so uh, I was, you know, I was that absolutely gutted. You know, we uh, him. It were I, I mean we we'd known about it. My, my last fight were in November, and that was for the IBO Intercontinental title. Um, because we we got win before the there were a chance of making the fight. So in order to qualify me for for to to fight for the title, I had to win the Intercontinental, and then that makes me mandatory. So that's what we did in November. So it's been a long time coming. We we knew what yeah. were happening, and then the date got set, twenty seventh of March. And then two weeks before, you know, all, all this happened, you know, we, we actually, we, we went out to Fort Aventura. Um, there, were, there were a few of us, uh, John Fuchs, you know, John Fuchs. John Fuchs came out with Liam Woods, uh, obviously Glenn and, and everyone. Um, so we, we just went out for, for a week just, just to kind of break training up, get a little bit of sun and things. It just, just breaks up training a bit. Yeah. And then I was going to get back, and then that'd be my last hard week after that, you know, my last spars and everything. And then it'd be fight week. And then, um, you know, I, I couldn't. We, we heard about this coronavirus before we went over, and, and Dennis Hobson, my, my uh, manager, he, he weren't too fussed about me going. Uh, you know, he was saying, Tommy, this, this coronavirus, I think it, it's more serious than people think. And I was like, come on, Dennis, get all with it. You know, it's yeah. <laughs> you know, just brushing it off. So, so we, so we went out there, uh, and ev every morning, you know, we, when we were getting up, you know, making a coffee, and that just before we went for a run, we had BBC Radio on back back home, uh, and every day it was just kind of escalating a little bit more, just getting a bit more worse, and still were talking about, oh, sporting events might be cancelled, and rugby's cancelled, and oh, this morning it's tennis that's called off, mm. and we're just kind of thinking, oh, I hope this doesn't affect us or anything. And then we, you know, everything was good. We had we had a great week training out there. Um, and in in the airport on on the way back, uh, me, Glenn, um, and and a, and a few others, we thought we we best get like, uh, you know, my, my Mrs. Charlie somehow best get a bottle of perfume or something. So we were getting like last minute as as, as you do. Uh, so I, I would get I would get in some in um in in shop, and we went to pay for it. And women were like. We've just heard that all all Spanish airports are closing as as of tomorrow, so we were like, really? And she was like, yeah. They're like, there's only going to be a few more flights. You're very lucky. So if we'd have left, it, we'd have left it a day later or, or a couple of hours later, we we wouldn't have got back. Which, what a nightmare! I don't, I don't know whether that's a, a good thing or a bad. Thing. <laughs> I probably could have done it. Ringing your missus. I'm going yeah. to be in, on my holidays for three months. 
coronavirus. It's not me. <laughs> but but we we got back, and then um, you know things were a bit up in air. But I was I was still fairly fairly positive, you know. And then uh, and then on the following Monday, I think um, I think Boris made that announcement where there were going to be no um, public services to events and stuff. And things just kind of, that, that that were kind of it. Um, and then that that's it, you know. Yeah, total nightmare. But again, lucky that you're you're you got home, and also in the grand scheme of things, yeah, you're out of action for a couple of months. But I think for a lot of fighters, because everyone is in the same position, it's when it's something like you get injured or something happens or your flight falls through, and everyone else is progressing, it's probably a lot worse than no one. Of course, it is. Yeah, everyone's of course in the is. same boat. Exactly, exactly. You know, and I'm I'm a big believer in you know things happen for for a, a reason and stuff, and uh, mm-hmm. and it, it just it is what it is. You got to turn a, a seemingly negative situation and, and make it positive. So that that's why I've that's why I've tried to do really. I don't know about my hair, but my hair's getting a bit. Longer. <laughs> we're all we're all we're all struggling with hair. I <laughs> I was like, my eyebrows, if, the, if they yeah. grow anymore, I'm literally they're going to yeah. dry enough with my hairline, yeah. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, on paper, Tommy, when you look at your career, it's it's pretty much perfect. You know what I mean? It's, it's You're undefeated. You've got, like, numerous titles. Obviously, this next fight would have made you mandatory and all the different things. Are you as happy as one would expect with how everything has gone? I am very happy. Yeah, very happy. I mean, for... Uh... For a fight, for a fighter that only won one more than he lost as, as an amateur, um, I'm I'm not doing bad. Do you know what I mean? And probably, you know, I think I think everyone kind of you know thought oh, he's he's a decent fighter, and you know we'll, we'll keep an eye on him. But maybe um, maybe you know win, winning a, a Commonwealth title or or something like that. You know, maybe not a lot of people thought I could, but it's uh, it's, it's all happening. Yeah. So I'm no, I'm I'm very very happy with where I am. I've, the, the main thing is I've got such good people around me. Like my team is just amazing, my family, um, and I'm I'm living my dream. I, I mm-hmm. honestly am. Uh, you know, if if someone said to me ten years ago that I'd I'd be Commonwealth champion and WBC international or whatever, or not, it's not even about the titles. It's just my my first pro fight where that were kind of it for me. Do you know what I mean? I, I'd kind of done. I'd done it. I could always say that I'd done it. Um, so I'm just enjoying the the journey, to be honest. Absolutely. You know, you mentioned there, like, people saying that, you know, are kind of alluding that you might not have been able to do it back when you started or not thinking that you would achieve what you you had achieved. Do you kind of take, does that sort of give you a little bit of sort of um, kind of get up and go to prove people wrong? Or would you be very much like, I don't care what anyone says, I'm doing this for me and, you know, just focus on your own path? Yeah. I think I, I am I am very focused, but I I tend to take a lot of things to art me. Uh, I kind of I think I kind of wear me out on my sleeve a bit. So thing you know obviously think things do get to you, but mm-hmm. I I definitely say it's been a positive. I, you know I feel I feel good that I have proved some people wrong, and I I hundred percent think I'm going to prove people wrong in in future as well. Um, so I think you can only you can only use it as to to fuel what what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, don't don't try and you know don't let it just like nick, nick on your mind. You know, just try and try and use it for your benefit. That's what I've tried to do. And in terms of then, like when we look at turning over, turning professional, would you have been someone who set goals, like short term goals, like looking at the different titles and say, well, this is a title that I want to try and attain, and then you get that title, and then you go on to the next thing, or is it very much? Just take a fight by fight, and whatever opportunity comes up, you just roll with it. I think I think it is goals. I mean, you know, if, if someone asked me when I was fifteen, you know, after my first amateur fight, and said, you know, what, you know, where do you want to be in in ten, uh, fifteen years? I'd say I want to be a world champion. I I always had that in in, in my head, and I think ninety nine percent of fighters that is what they're aiming for. Um, and then, like, like I said, you know, the, your different stages, you know, your central area, English, British, Commonwealth, they they are in in your mind. But sometimes it doesn't always work out like that, and sometimes yeah. opportunities just come out of blue, and 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 you've got to, you've got to take them. Because um, I think you know, I, I fought I fought for the central area title in my seventh fight, I think. Um, so then, by by then, obviously the the next step would be a, an English title, 
but then I think by my tenth fight, I think I think it were were my tenth fight, I got I got the Commonwealth title shot. So that automatically just catapults you. Yeah. Um, so you you know it, it's brilliant if if you can win every title along the way and do it very traditional. That that's brilliant, but it doesn't always work out like that, and mm-hmm. you've just got to take what 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 you're given really. Do any of them mean more to you? I think um, I mean I, I love I love my titles. My my central area will always mean a lot. It was my first my first title. But when you're talking about prestigious, obviously at, at this time, uh, my my Commonwealth is is you know mm. that that's it's it, it's a it's a major title. You know. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm very I'm very proud to have that very proud. Uh, when you when you look at um, you know, when you set out to obviously win to achieve, uh, every fighter wants to be world title holder. At, b- b- by the time they finish their career, um, when you're thinking about all this happening along in the journey, and then you attain the titles and you win the fights that you were like, this would be a big fight if I won, and it happens. Does it feel like you had imagined it? Like, does it feel like when you're a kid and you think about holding that title and walking out of a ring with that title, is it as it appears yeah. or, or is it as you thought it would feel like? I'm going to say no, but not in a bad way. It's not, mm. it's not like, oh, this is how, how I imagined it. You just you kind of in a bubble. Uh, yeah. To be honest with you, I don't think as a fighter you really um, look back at what you've done in, in tongue you've finished your career. So maybe mm-hmm. maybe when I when I finish finish boxing or all together, I look back and think, wow, that that was special or that night was special. Don't get me wrong, like I still have my days. Like if I'm waiting for my next session and I'll just be flicking through my photos or my videos on on my phone and. Like I've got, I've got this video, and it's like, like my favorite video in the world. It's like bang after Commonwealth title, the dressing room is just rammed. Yeah. And <laughs> singing, the wrong singing. There's only one Tommy Frank, but like memories like that won't live with me till till the day I die. And not, not, it's not just the achievement that I, that I got. It's the people that I shared it with. Yes. Um So they're they're the kind, you know, they're the people that you have at, at your wedding, and you know family occasions and parties but so for them for them people that mean a lot to me to to be there for me um that that memory alone is is priceless is there any one person who you kind of gravitate towards after a win or is there one person that you can't wait to get on the phone to or show the title Mm. to who do you who do you want to prove that you're you know who who, not maybe not prove but who's the one person that's you know, you want them to be proud of you. Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I can't, I mean, I can't wait to give my dad a hug after a fight. Yeah. Um, can't wait to give my dad a hug. All, all, all my family, I've got the most amazing fiance uh, in, in the world. You know, she, she supports me. We've been together seven years. Um, you know, so obviously she, she's been to, been to every fight. Um, and I've just, like I said, the... There's probably there's probably not not one person I just I, I love seeing everyone because I appreciate ev- everyone and um, and not only that like the fighters that that have boxed before me like your Sam mm-hmm. Sheedy, your John Fuchs, you know Jez Wilson, Lee Edwards, Carl Wilde, all, all these were, were professionals at, at Sheffield Boxing Centre. But since I've been you know twelve, thirteen, walking in them gym doors, they've been my heroes. So mm-hmm. like the first thing I thought when I won a Central Area title were I'm in Central Area Title Club because you know you've got John John Fuchs got it, Sam Sheedy, Jez Wilson, Carl White, they all got it. So it were you know just to say that I were I were doing the same as them. I were winning mm-hmm. titles as, as a professional, so that that were very very special to me as well. And I think yeah, not. It's history, right? So you're kind of you're 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 putting your name to a piece of history. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think. Um, you know, obviously, I'm I'm doing a lot. Like pe- people are getting behind me. So I, I'm I'm an ambassador for Art Research UK. Amazing. When when I when I was I was born with a, a hole in the art, so I had a, an operation when I was when I was five to to wow. repair. It. So again, like I'm I'm so appreciative. It's not. It's like I'm not only having a, an effect in boxing. Mm-hmm. I'm having an effect to people that have, that have never never put on a pair of gloves in their life. You know, they they just getting behind me and supporting me because they, they like what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm kind of, 
I wouldn't say changing people's lives, but just it met, you know, like uh, met, making someone's day or or, or something mm-hmm. like that, and and you know, just telling them that, that I've I've really made a, a, an impact on, on on what they're doing. So so that's great. And I actually, the the one thing that I've always wanted to do is I, I had my surgery when I was five in in Leeds uh, at Leeds General uh, Infirmary, and I I think it was January. I went back there. Um, I took I took all, all the belts and everything. I went back and I, I actually met the surgeon that performed my surgery. Um, no way. Yeah. Wow. Like, like the, the press made quite a big deal and I think it was on ITV and things like that. But just to see to see the kids and that, because that, that was something that I've always dreamed of doing. Mm. Like uh, when, when I, obviously when I started boxing, I started winning titles as, as an amateur and then as a pro, I always thought, I'd love to go back to hospital and just kind of see see how the kids reacted to that. Yeah, yeah, am, yeah, yeah. I am kind of the proof, you know, that no matter what, you know, I, I had open heart surgery at the age of five, so who, who would have thought I'd have gone on to be a Commonwealth champion or, or whatever I'm going to go, go on to win? Yeah. Uh, so above anything, I really want to be a, a role model to, to kids, um, you know, someone they can look at and think, he did it, so I'm I'm kind mm. of the the, uh, blup- the blueprint for for doing it. So that yeah, that really... fair play to you, brilliant. That's a fantastic story. That I didn't know that at all. I didn't know yeah. that about the yeah. surgery, yeah. and then you also going back. No, yeah, that, that's yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Man. I'm I'm not. I don't really. I'm like I said. I've I've done bits with with various charities and stuff. Um, but I really want to. I really want to do more things as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe I need to start putting that out, out there more. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, yeah, I, you should. Sure I don't know if any. If any. As far as I know, I'm I'm the only pro boxer in in Britain who who's had open heart surgery when they were little. You know. Um, I can't really think think of, any, of anyone else, but but like I said, more than anything, you know, I want to be be a role model. Yeah, and like at that, and that's so um, admirable as well to, for you to want to have that quality and to want to actively want to do something and to go and yeah. inspire the younger generation because it's like we're kind of in a weird time at the moment where I think especially young males are yeah. I think a little bit lost. And I need, need yeah. some need some aspiration and inspiration yeah. to be better and, or to, to achieve things. Yeah. There is nothing like making someone's day. And yeah. I think especially like now more than ever in these times, people just need to be nice to each other. Yes. Um, you know, if, if you can just, just be nice to someone, it might it might make the day or, you know, let them go in front of you in, in queue and shop or, you know, just, just small acts. Um, yeah. Could go a long way, I think. Um, so if I think if people were more like that, you know, the world might be a bit nicer. It is nice, don't get me wrong. There's a lot, yeah. there's so many nice people. So let's focus on that. Let's focus on positive. Absolutely, all about the positive vibes, hundred percent. But when yeah. you were growing up, who who were the people who inspired you? Who did you look up to? Uh, like like I said, you know, the the pros the pros from SBC, they they were big role models of mine. Um, I'd say you know in in term in terms of just being a a, a decent person, just meet my family, my mom, dad, brother, and sister. Got such a good family. Uh, I'm I'm so lucky to have him. Um, and and I think in in terms of you know sporting sporting figures and stuff, you know I I used to love football. I'm a I'm a long uh, life uh, Chef Young United fan, so I've I've always watched United. Um, and in, in boxing, I mean, you know, you've got your, like, I love Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard were brilliant. Before, I'd probably say my, my own time is Sugar Ray Robinson. Um, and I, I absolutely love Sugar Ray Robinson. In fact, like, the, these pictures, be at, like, I don't know if you can see them. You got Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe, Marilyn yeah. That, that Charlie, Charlie's just decorated the house as she wants it. <laughs> <laughs> he, get, he says I can have a, a picture in, in a, a boxing picture, so I'm gonna get um, it, it's black and white, and it, it's Sugar Ray Robinson and Randy Turpin, uh, the Brilliant. second fight, uh, and he's just stopped Randy Turpin. Randy Turpin's on ropes. Uh, Sugar Ray is walking to neutral corner. Referee's waving off. It's a brilliant picture. And, and Andrew Saunders, he's, he's a photographer, uh, sporting captures. You might want to give him a follow, anyone. And he. Um, I messaged him saying, "Oh, could you any chance of blowing me this up?" 
and it was and he said it, it's not going to look good because it, it's too grainy. You know the original uh, yeah. photo. So I think he's actually he actually messaged the. I think the photo belongs to the Boxing Hall of Fame. He actually messaged them and got into got into sending the original photo. Uh, so wow. he's going to get blown up for me. I think he's bringing it tomorrow. So I can't wait to get that up. Oh, Am I really? talking too much? Or <laughs> <laughs> we got, we got time limit. I just think we got a time limit. We didn't have <laughs> No, in a, there's a time limit of a, of an hour, but you're oh, not right. talking. I'd rather you talk too much than say okay. nothing. Right, but exactly. uh, you're going to have to send a picture when you get us. I won't do. I'll send a picture. I'll put it up. I'll put got, it up on our story. I've got, on, I've got a few on step. Do you want to show you? Yeah, go on. Yeah, give us a tour. I've got a few on stairs. My other ass just got in. She's just on phone. Yeah. But we won't disturb her. I've got. Um, I'm gonna try and get a bit. Like I'm, I want to. Sorry, we've just had uh, tiling done today, so that's why Love we've got it. all this. I got this. Uh, it, Nick first. Once as he gave me that. Oh, that's, oh, that's that Jerry. That is brilliant. Uh, that's my, great. That, that's just a classic. classic yeah. There the belts. Got the belts up. Love it. You have to. Is this in your hall? Can people that's see Scott this West, when you Scott, walk yeah. in? That's Scott West. That's Scott. God bless him. So, yeah, so we're, we're just getting everything done. So it's a bit of a bomb site, isn't it? I love but, that. Yeah. But like I said, I'm going to I'm gonna get that photo up in, in room when it comes. Brilliant, yeah. That'll be gorgeous. And I, lo I love that you have your belts on display. Have them proud. Yeah, well, do you know what? I just, I got that uh, cabinet from Ikea. Uh, about two weeks ago, my dad put it up for me, um, and I can't stop looking at it yeah, because I've, 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 had, I've had the bounce for for you know since since I won him. But um, you know, just like every time I walk upstairs, like I must have five seconds and just, just look at him. Right when you win the belt, okay, be honest, yeah. and you're in the gas. And you're like, it's like you're, you have your week off. You're not back in the gym for another week. And yeah, you have yeah. the best. Do you just find yourself just wearing them? Or like oh, standing in the best. mirror? <laughs> Absolutely. I think I sleep with him for about three <laughs> days. Um, <sighs> Charlie gets a bit mad with that. But I have, a, I have him in, in bed for about three days. And then they don't, they don't get put away. They're either on SETI or... Um, if if postman delivers to me, I'm like, oh, I just opened door, just to see him. Oh, look, it's my bounce. Uh, so good. Every single champion, <laughs> every single champion that I've had yeah. on him, like w the week after, what do you do the best? And they're all the same. Most of them are like, I slept with it for two weeks That's until I was yeah. told you're going to get a divorce until it feels better yeah, to yeah. get out of the room. And well, I remember Tom, well, Tommy McCarthy saying um, yeah. he, he he was once he, he when he won the, the his uh, the cruiserweight title and he was like um, someone had said will you come down for this like talk and bring the belt and he was like yeah but he ended up going on the piss afterwards but he had the belt with him and he was like walking into the pub <laughs> and like people were buying him points and he's got like yeah, the belt yeah. on. Just well, brilliant stories, well, it's, you know. It's, after my last fight, we had this big uh, after party at G Casino in Sheffield. Um, and I'd, I'd, that was the IBO Intercontinental title. But obviously, every fight, you bring on your bounce with you. So yeah. the, the WBC uh, International Silver one, Glenn, Glenn Adam, obviously, I, I was doing my, my drug tests after the fight and everything. So I, I was going to be about an hour. So Glenn went to the casino ahead of me. So I walked in casino and he's got my, my green WBC belt and and the they have some silver buckles, don't they? And and the buckle in, in the other hand just snapped off. <laughs> oh no. Like, well I, I dropped it in car park and I I couldn't believe it. I was absolutely devoured. But no uh, but it is what it is. I still haven't got that fixed. I can't get a big enough buckle. Um I thought I thought they could like maybe uh like glue them back together but apparently yeah. that, that's not a thing you do so oh shit yeah. well at least that's part of the story now when someone says also, what happened yeah. to Buffalo also, there you yeah. go yeah. well can you see have any, has anyone left a question yes can you no, see thank Red you. I don't oh, think we have. I don't think anyone wants to know um, there's, there's a little see where it has a little question yeah a little question mark yeah does it have no. a red no, something the same one 
There's no questions. No questions. Well, I will ask you questions that have been asked this week because they usually, we have the same people that ask the same questions. No. So one of them that always gets asked is if you had to invite five famous people to dinner, right. who would you choose? They can be boxers because sometimes right. you, you, yeah, might not, you might not know yeah. loads of famous people or want celebrities well, not, there. So not just boxing, it could be anyone. Could be anyone, dead or alive. Musicians, uh, actors, yeah, yeah. boxers. Right. Number one, Mohammed Ali. Yes. You've, Brilliant. Imagine, imagine meeting Mohammed Ali. Do you know, after a couple of fights ago, after one of my fights, we went to New York uh, and we went to Deer Lake, Pennsylvania, uh, where, where we used to train. I don't know if you've heard of Deer Lake. but no. it's very, Yeah, it's, it's a very, very famous place in boxing. You know, Mohammed Ali you, used to train there. Um, you know, it's, it's a beautiful place, got like log cabins on it and everything. So just just to go where he trained, we're, we're absolutely un, unreal. Um, wow. Yeah, Mohammed Ali. Right. Um, I know I could, like, Sh Sugar Ray Robinson, Jake LaMotta. Like, imagine sitting Maybe. down, imagine being one guy uh, for a Sugar Ray Robinson, Jake LaMotta fight yeah. back in the day. Uh, I'd love to see, like, just what, what that were like. Uh, two more two more they're going to end up being bo oh, boxers aren't they <laughs> um, two more come on I can't think I'm going to say Sugar Ray Leonard I'm going to say Sugar Ray Leonard alright because um, I get like going back to some of some of the fighters in, in our gym like Sam Shady John Phillips they've all met um, they've all met Sugar Ray Leonard like Glenn he, he's put on a couple of, of evenings with Sugar Ray Leonard not recently but but you know a few years back yeah uh, and just just telling me stories he's done the same way with Jake Lamotta as well um, and you know just, you know just sat backstage on your own with Sugar Ray mm. Leonard and Jake Lamotta and just, just picking the brains about boxing or what, what they've done um, so Sugar Ray Leonard one more I think um no, it's not boxing. I watch a lot of YouTube. I was watching. Uh, I was watching Peter K on YouTube today. <laughs> Brilliant. He's, funny, isn't it, Peter He's very funny. I love. I love Peter K. I'd, I'd invite him to any any party or all. I think he'd um, he'd just be good company, wouldn't he? Make everyone he, laugh. He might be a bit uncomfortable for the first hour, but I'm yeah. sure he'd settle yeah. in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, we'll ask you two more. Second question. What was your toughest toughest fight and why? My toughest fight uh, was definitely not not my last fight, the fight before for the for the WBC international silver title. Boxed a guy called Aaron Depeyan from Thailand. Um, he not had he not had many boxing fights, but I think he'd had maybe about three hundred Thai boxing Thai fights. Fight. Whatever it is, oh, yeah. uh, I think his record was, was six and one. He had a lot of knockouts. Um, for me, I I personally un underperformed that night, uh, and I'm I'm not just saying it, but I just I, f I definitely felt like I did un underperform. That and he was just tough as anything, and he hit so hard. Um, I can remember it was seconds out round one, ding ding, and I kind of met him in the centre, and he just bent down and threw a jab to my body, and it felt like he had like a like a bamboo shoot or something with a glove on end and just banging my body like honestly he could he could really really punch I think he's gone I think he's stopped like three since 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 fighting me um, and no that, that it, it were not it were not 12 rounds I won I won on a, on a split decision I thought I thought as a fighter you know when you've won or lost um, mm. to be honest with you if I thought I'd lost I'd just say I, I think I lost that I'm not I'm not really uh, d dishonest so um, I thought I thought I won it by by a round, uh, and I think on the on the um, judges' scorecards, the last two rounds won it for me. Uh, but it was just one of them fights where it weren't like there were no knockdowns involved. I weren't getting getting knocked all over or, or anything like that. But it was just one of them fights where I had to bite down on my gum shield, go out and, and grind it out. Uh, it, like I said, it, it was tough twelve rounds, and and I proved that I can do that. You know, when when the going gets tough. I can I can rise to that and and do what I've got to do. You can't always win pretty. Um, and do you know what? Looking back, I'm so happy that fight happened like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it was just a, a breeze, and I didn't have to go through any you know 
uh, any, anything like that. I think it, it might have, I might have experienced that in, in a more important fight. Well, not, not a more important, but you know what I mean. Later down yeah. the line, um, that might have cropped up and I might have not known how, how to deal with it. So, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, Aaron Depay and watch out for him. I'll probably box him again at some, some point in, in my career. Um, I think I'd, I'd probably do, do a better job on him. I'm not just saying or that. Or we could see you go into Muay Thai and you could challenge oh, him there. <laughs> Lydia, one sec. You've gone, you've gone quiet, you. I have. Yeah, why is it doing it? Is, this, is it my phone? Is it? Can you hear speak, me at all? Speak. Hello, hello. Yeah, so I can hear you, but it's just really, really quiet. I don't know if it's because some... I don't know if it, Dennis has just tried ringing me. So I don't know whether that's not everything. Dennis, can you hear me now? I, I can hear you, but very, very thin. Well, i tell you what. We had a Go good on. run. We had a good run. <laughs> I know, I it know. Was a good, that was a good chat. We were just finished anyway. Yeah, yeah, so all right, all right. This is, this, this is the important bit, though. You have to save this video so that we have it. Yeah, all right. So when you click end, right? So there's a, there's a cross in the top corner of your screen. I click that to come off, don't I, to exit? No, no, that, that'll... <laughs> right, what so this, can you see end? See the, see the X on, on your, your screen at the top for you? Oh, I've got it, yeah. Yeah, there's yes. end in the top corner, yeah. Exactly. So you click ends on the top corner and then it will give you an option to save. So it'll come up and say yeah. save IGTV. Click yeah. save. Click save, yeah. Yeah. And then it will post to your profile and I'll screen record it from there. Right. So all I've got to do is save it. You're going to do the rest. I'll do everything else. That's brilliant. All right then. Right. Sounds good. That was brilliant. We got there in the end, Tommy. We, we, we adapted and overcame. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Exactly. Yeah. No, thank you very much for having me. No uh, problem. I'll Anytime. We'll, we'll, again soon, I hope. Yeah, we will. We'll definitely catch up again. 100%. Nice one. All right. Okay, have thank a good you. Weekend. See you Take later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.